Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because chances are you are the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Ed Milet, and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Work on your identity. You got to begin to work on you, your identity. You're never going to exceed. Your, we both said earlier that we're still to this day limited basically by our identity. We're limited by what we think we're capable of, right? We, we said that now. It was true when we were 18, 22, and at our ages now. And so you've got to do the things that stretch your identity and your worth, whether that be your faith life, your spiritual life, your personal development, self-improvement, reading, listening, all that stuff. You expand your identity, you'll never exceed your identity. Rule number two, be grateful. Some people get caught up in that illusion. I'm going to call it an illusion that you think, okay, just because you have money, just because you have this status or whatever, that all of a sudden... Wow, they have it all. Yeah. And you, which is crazy though. You see the majority of the examples, those people are the, some of the most, you know, miserable people out there. I had a, I'm so glad you think that. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we're friends now. I was building a house, you know, blessed to have a bunch of money to build a house. Not as nice as this one right here, but I was building a pretty nice house about 10 years ago. And um, I was pissed this day. Just pissed. Everything was wrong. The contractor was screwed up. Some appointment had canceled. I'm furious. And I walk in, there's construction happening. I walk in, I'm, where is this? You know, with my wife, there's about 10 dudes in there working. Mm -hmm. They're all from Mexico. Yeah. They're playing music, they're dancing, they're partying, they're having a great time. They're making 10 bucks an hour. Yeah. And I remember standing there going, how is it the dude building this mansion is 150th as happy as the dudes working on building this other man's mansion? What the hell is wrong with me? Yeah. And that was a lack of gratitude in my life, those guys were grateful for what they had. Their happiness is connected to how grateful they were to be on that job, to be together, to be doing something they were great at doing, whether they were a roofer or a mason, they were great at what they did, they were using their gifts, they were happy, they were grateful. And if life was based on happiness, is that how you measure life? They're living a better life than me. Yeah. And I had to really get a hold of that whole concept in my mind about gratitude that day. Rule number three, go all in. Ask yourself this question, honestly, in whatever business you're in, have you done everything physically and mentally possible to get yourself to that table? Have you done everything you're capable of? Have you been relentless and ferocious and invested so much time, effort, and energy that inside you, you know you deserve to win? Or have you held something in reserve? Have you not really given it your best? Have you kind of hoped you'd get a little bit lucky? Or maybe you've stuck your toe in it, or maybe you've given most of your heart to it, but not completely all your heart and all your effort and all your labor and all your energy because you want to have an excuse if it doesn't work. Or maybe you want to hold a little reserve so you don't get your hopes up too much in case it doesn't work out. Well, it's that little bit of reserve you hold back that will ultimately keep you from sitting at the table of success. To get to that table, to sit up at the big boy and the big lady table, you're going to have to be giving it everything you've got so that inside there's a shift that takes place that says, ah, I deserve this. I believe I deserve to have whatever these things are I want to have. So ask yourself that question when this video goes away. Have you given it everything? And if you haven't, you've got a chance today to change that and ultimately 30 days from now completely change what you believe you deserve. And you're a whole new person with a whole new identity, with a whole new set of beliefs. Rule number four, be willing to step into the unknown. I think all successful people on some level, and to the extent you are successful is the extent you have this thing, which is that you're willing to step into spaces you are ill prepared for. So it seems to me like you're willing to, you kind of think like, if I get my foot in the door, then I'll figure this stuff out, right? Yes. Whereas what most people do, and this is killing you by the way, I won't step into the door until I'm completely prepared, which is a total fallacy anyways as an entrepreneur, right. for sure, or wanting to become a rapper or have a music career or an artist or anything great. If you're waiting for a threshold of, I need to be totally prepared, then I'll step in the door, you will be on the other side of that door the rest of your life. I love the book by my brother Evan Carmichael, Built to Serve You Guys. This is the kind of thing you get in this book. Most people wake up and drive to a job they hate 
Think about your five closest friends. Are they happy? Do they live their lives with purpose? Do you? We put on a fake front for what we want people to see and think about us, but the reality is most people aren't happy. We're lost, we settle. You can't be happy if you don't know your purpose. And then he goes on to explain how to do that. You guys should get this book, Built to Serve, by my dear friend, Evan Carmichael. Rule number five, overcome adversity. Just remember what you were put here to do. You're not a mistake. You're not here by an accident. You were born to do something great with your life. You were born to make a difference with your life. This is a fact. Every one of us was put here to do something special. And that special thing is to help one another in some way, shape, or form. And if you can just remember that and negotiate the price in advance, decide now that your will to win cannot be bought by any failure or any success. And now you've got a chance to do something special with your life. And once you've made that decision, just get ready because here comes all the adversity. Just get ready. Here comes all the setbacks, all the failures, all the rejection. It's part of it. So just like when it's happening to you, you shouldn't be going, oh my God, that's a sign it's not for me or I should shift or maybe I, you know, I can only take so much or I'm the guy who should I go into something I'm not cut out for. Just get ready. Adversity, setbacks, rejection, uh, certain things you'll reach and they weren't as good as you thought when you'd get there. Right. There's all kinds of stuff that happens when you get there. Like, I didn't think I thought it'd be better than this. Right. All of it's there. It's all part of the journey. It's all part of the path. Just accept that and do something great with your life. Rule number six, have big dreams. If you're leading an organization or want to lead one, even if it's two people, your job is to sell a big enough vision and a big enough dream that the dreams of everybody that's in your stewardship can fit inside the one you're selling. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things most leaders lack is their ability to convey a big vision of something significant, of something major. I was reading a book on Steve Jobs and there's a guy written by a guy named Guy Kawasaki. He's got good stuff. He kind of helped Macintosh get off the ground, but it's called Selling the Dream. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how Jobs was just evangelical about their cause yeah. and their mission and it was infectious. I, I, a good buddy of mine now has become Steve Wozniak, who was one of the other co-founders. Yeah. And he's just a completely different dude. He's yeah. not that dude at all. But Apple doesn't happen if Jobs isn't this visionary dreamer to your point where everything thought it was nuts. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Because I'm going to build the biggest company in the world. Yeah. Most influential company in the history of the world. And he's probably done that. Yeah. And yeah. If people thought he was nuts in his garage with Wozniak. Rule number seven, do what you say. For those of you that want to build more confidence in your life, you want to become a super confident person. It's very simple. Self-confident people do the things they say they're going to do over and over and over again to the point where they keep promises they make to themselves and they build confidence. The biggest way to build confidence in yourself is to say you're going to do something and then go do it. Whatever it is, I'm going to go prospecting and you do it. It's not even necessarily always just a sale or just a recruit or just something big. It's even the little things. I'm going to get up earlier. I'm going to get up at 5.30. I'm going to be in the gym at a certain time. I'm going to be at the office at a certain time and then you do it. I'm going to write two sales and then you do it. I'm going to get a recruit and then you do it. That starts to build the muscle of confidence in you, is actually doing what you say. The rarest human being walking the planet is somebody who actually does what they say they're going to do. When you get a new person into your organization, they say, I'm on fire, I know these people, or I'm going to do this, this, or that. Watch what they do. If they actually go do five, six, seven field training appointments the first week, if they get three, four, five people to the meeting, now you've got a great new recruit. If they actually go do those things, now you've got a new person that could do something, not based on what they say. Begin to listen far less to what people tell you they're going to do or what they're thinking and feeling and watch them. Watch how they behave. Watch what they do. And for you to become a leader, for you to become a champion, for you to become world class at whatever it is you're involved with, I'll submit to you that if you're a person who does what you say you're going to do, you are the rarest of all humans walking the earth. You're in the 1% if you actually do what you say you're going to do. And you have confidence when you do that. If you're someone watching this and you say, you know what, I've not consistently done what I said I was going to do. You need to operate out of your imagination, not your memory. You're not your memory. You're not who you used to be. You're not your past. Operate out of your imagination. Operate out of your vision, not your memory. People who operate out of their memory often just repeat the same cycle in their life over and over and over again. People who operate out of their imagination, people who operate out of their vision, move to a new place. 
And so if you've been somebody who's not always done what you said you were going to do, that's, that's a memory. That's in the distance. We don't need to focus on that. We need to focus on our vision and begin to build the habit of moving towards and becoming the person we want to be. And the person we really want to be is somebody who does what they say they're going to do. Someone who's a real friend, who delivers as a friend. Someone, if you're in love with somebody, that you, you act and do and treat them like you're in love with them. Someone that's in business who does and acts and behaves and performs and produces like the way they say they're going to do. And when you begin to do that, then you're a real teammate. When I know I can rely, when so-and-so's they're going to do five, they do it every time. It's in the bank. And when you're that reliable, you have self-confidence, and then I build confidence in you. I have confidence in you. If you were a part of my business or my team, you earn my confidence, you earn my trust, you earn my respect, and you earn it by doing what you say you're going to do. You earn my friendship that way, you earn your stripes in business that way, and you earn your confidence that way. Rule number eight, stay focused. Stop acting like you don't know. Stop acting like you can't get it done, like you're one key away, one mentor away, one this away. You know what you're away? You're one belief and one activity away. You're one new recruit in your business from changing your life. You're one new client, one breakthrough, one distinction that you make away from doing something great. Get totally immersed in it. Like I talked about earlier with my dad's cancer, get totally immersed, stay focused in that area. Don't look at 50 different things and decide that's what you're going to do with your life. And now you got a chance to do something. Rule number nine, study successful people. The one thing that burns me, and I don't, I don't spend a lot of time on it, is if you're going to study a mentor or have a couple mentors in business or personal development like we're doing, can you please make sure that they've been successful outside yeah. of telling you how to do it? It'll, you'll find that the circle is very small of those of us that are in this space that have actually built something significant. That's the only thing. If I'm going to go to the gym and get trained by a trainer, I want it to be somebody in great shape. Yeah. You better, you better live what you're teaching me. And in personal development or business, whatever we want to describe this thing we're doing right now, find out if they're successful first. Not that they got successful telling people how to do things they've never applied. Yeah. It drives me nuts. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is dive in. This morning was very unusual. Number one was the water was unusually cold <laughs> this morning, uh, really cold. And the waves were huge, very big waves this morning. And both of those things made me think about business. And there's an application for you that I wanted to share with you. The first one was just getting into the water this morning. It was freezing. And when I had to get in there, I had to make a decision. How do I get in? Do I kind of take my time where I go my feet in first, kind of get adapted and then come out, get adapted, go back in up to my waist, get a little warmer, then come back in up to my neck, you get the deal. But all that would do is extend the pain. All that does, it's logical, it makes sense. Don't go until you're ready, take your time. But really all that does, what does that really do? That extends the pain. And so I didn't do that, I did what the pros do, right? Which is what people do in every endeavor that are champions is I ran, boom, right in, headlong, right into the water, right? You dive in, boom, there's a shot. But then you get adapted so much more quickly than you could possibly imagine, and then you're off to riding the waves. Well, the same is true in business. The champions in everything, I don't care if it's your fitness, if it's your, uh, your family, your faith, you name it, the way that you get great at something is you dive into it and get adapted quickly and you'll be surprised at your ability to adapt and navigate your way through success. The average people in everything, frankly the people who lose are the ones who constantly take their time. They're too logical. They think, well I can't do this until I'm ready. If I'm not ready, I'll mess it up. And I don't want to get, it's too cold, it's too, it's too freezing. Well, the truth is in business, that's not how it works. If you go slow, you're extending the time you're in pain. And worse yet, while the champions have already dove in, got acclimated, they're out there riding their waves, making progress, you're still on the shore deciding whether you're gonna get ready to get ready. And so if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, you're somebody getting associated with my firm, which is a wonderful decision, by the way. But if you're going to decide that, You've got to decide that and go and trust the fact that you have your instincts, your background, your training, your mentors, the system around you. And that's true whether you're an entrepreneur in my business or you're one of these firms that I've spoken to on the outside. I want to encourage all of you, if you're going to get in, get into business and go. You'll be amazed at your capacity to evolve and to adapt and to succeed. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and what is your plan of action that you're going to execute this week to make some immediate momentum 
happen. When you just get motivated and watch a video, you have a 35% chance of following through. That's what the science says. But when you write down what time, what day, what place you're actually going to execute, when you create the plan, you have a 91% chance of following through. And I want that for you. And when you commit to people publicly, you increase your chances even more of actually doing it. So I want to know what your single biggest takeaway from this video was and your specific plan of action to actually get the result you're after. Let me know. Put it down in the comments below because I want to celebrate you. We talk all the time in, the, in our business we, about building leaders. I want to build leaders. Scratch that. What you really want to do is develop people's abilities. That's what building leaders means, developing their abilities. When you can begin to develop someone's ability to close and produce a result, in fact, your whole career hinges not on your motivation level, not on your beliefs necessarily, because your beliefs are tied to your ability. They're hinged on whether or not you can get checks from people, whether you can get people to say yes, whether you can persuade people. And then the degree to which you succeed here will be predicated upon simply this. How good are you at transferring that skill to how many people? The more people you can transfer the ability to get yeses to, the better your business is going to do. Excuse me, the lights went out here on my computer. I'm going to give myself a little bit more light. And so that's what's going to be the difference maker in your career. People say, well, what about beliefs? Well, developing somebody is really two things. It's developing their skills and developing their beliefs. Well, which is more important? I don't know. I know this. If I can really do something very well, I begin to believe more in my business. And so I would say probably the skill set of being able to do something is more important than believing me because once you get me to be able to do something, I believe I can do it. My beliefs go up that I can succeed at something. Let me give you an, an example. If I were running a gym or I were a trainer at a gym and I brought you into my gym and all I ever did was motivate you, you're going to be a, you're going to be so fit. You're going to be one of the great workout people of all time. You're you're going to be incredible shape. You know how great this dream's going to be. It's going to be amazing how fit you are but I never teach you how to use any of the equipment. I never teach you how to produce any results. But week after week you come in and you think we're gonna work out, you think I'm gonna train you on how to use the equipment. That would be normal, but I don't. You come down every week to my gym and I motivate you. I give you a pep talk, I give you a speech, I talk about a whole bunch of things that really don't matter week after week. If you stop showing up after a while, should it surprise me if I owned a gym and you came down there every Tuesday night and every Saturday and I never showed you how to use any of the equipment? Or very rarely did I. See, what starts to happen is when you come to the gym, you start to not know how to use the equipment, you don't wanna use it. Heck, you might embarrass yourself if you use it. You might even hurt yourself and look bad if you started to try to do this workout thing I've never taught you how to do. And the more and more you come down, the more and more you begin to get scared of doing it because I've not taught you how to do it. The more your body doesn't change, the more you stop showing up and you eventually quit. It ought not to surprise my phone a gym. It ought not to surprise you if you own a WFG business. Your ability to train people how to use the equipment of WFG, which is closing, is everything. It, it's everything plus everything you else you could come up with. If we own a jewelry store, I said this earlier, we own a jewelry store, your success is predicated on your ability to get them to buy jewelry. If you owned a Domino's Pizza, your success is predicated on your ability to get people to buy pizza. If you owned a, a Jiffy Lube, your success is predicated upon your ability to get people to do oil changes with you, closing them, persuading them to do things that are in their best interest. They ought to change their oil. They ought to get a pizza from time to time. They ought to have a nice piece of jewelry. But it doesn't matter how motivated you are if you can't do it. And so what I'm telling you is, Everything in our business is closing, is the ability to teach people to close. Ask yourself a question on a scale of one to 10. If you think, let's say I'm a good closer or your executive vice chairman's a good closer, one to 10, if there are 10, where are you? And that's where your income is. That's where your success level is in WFG. It's not that you're not motivated. It's not that you haven't bought the dream. It's not that you don't love the company. It's that you can't close or you only close okay. And then how many people have you developed that can really produce a result? They can give a presentation, they can do a hiring interview, recruiting interview, they can go in the field and they can get a check. That's a business. Our business is actually very easy. It's very simple, it takes no talent, it's all skills. Once somebody develops skills, their beliefs go through the roof. But you can't fool me. You can't get me all motivated about something I know I'm not skilled yet at doing. You can give me every speech you want Tuesday nights. I can come to every convention and every wealth bowl you ever put on. But the fact of the matter is, you are not going to convince me I can do something you've not equipped me to do. 
Get into the business of equipping yourself, equipping your teammates. If you want to change your life in the next 30 days for free, check out my training right here below. Or if you want 10 more awesome rules from Ed Milet, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.